sputum, the pendulous sac that keeps them at the low temperature needed for spermatogenesis. The thin skin of the scrotum is continuous with the skin of the lower abdominal wall, the upper thigh, and the perineum. The scrotal skin, which will divide, is more or less wrinkled and the whole scrotum is more or less compact depending on the action of a fine layer of muscle, the dartos muscle, that lies just beneath the skin. To see the contents of the scrotum, we'll further divide the skin and subcutaneous tissue along this line. Here's the testis, protected by a number of covering layers. Here's the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord passes upwards then laterally to enter the inguinal canal, which is here. To see the testis and its surrounding layers more clearly, we'll take everything else out of the picture. The testis is surrounded by a thick layer of loose connective tissue, the spermatic fascia, that's formed by the fusion of two developmentally distinct layers, the internal and external spermatic fasciae that are derived from different layers of the abdominal wall. We'll draw the spermatic fascia aside. Inside it is an inner membranous envelope, the tunica vaginalis, which we've already opened. This is the surface of the testis itself. The tunica vaginalis creates a fluid-filled envelope around the testis. It's a remnant of peritoneum. Like peritoneum, it has an outer parietal layer and an inner visceral layer that covers the testis itself. We'll go to another specimen to see more of the testis. This is the testis. Here behind it, partly hidden, is the epididymis through which spermatozoa pass to reach the ductus deferens. The testis, which we've divided longitudinally here, has a tough fibrous coat, the tunica albuginea. Spermatozoa are formed throughout the testis in the seminiferous tubules, which are just visible here. The seminiferous tubules pass upwards and backwards to converge on this fibrous area, the mediastinum of the testis, where they join to form a network of tubules, the reti testis, that's not visible here. From the reti testis, there emerge between 4 and 12 efferent ducts, or vasa efferentia, which leave the testis and pass into the upper part of the epididymis. The epididymis is loosely attached to the posterior aspect of the testis. Here it is, more fully dissected. The epididymis has a head, a body, and a tail. In the head of the epididymis, the efferent ducts unite to form one tube, the duct of the epididymis. The duct, which is extremely convoluted, makes up almost all the bulk of the epididymis. Spermatozoa mature as they pass along it. Here at the tail of the epididymis, the convolutions of the duct are quite visible. The tail of the epididymis curls around and becomes continuous with the ductus deferens, which passes upwards to enter the spermatic cord. We'll divide the coverings of the spermatic cord. Here are the covering layers spread out. Here within the cord are the ductus deferens and the testicular blood vessels. The veins that drain the testis are arranged around the artery in a plexus called the pampiniform plexus. The testicular artery is out of sight here. The ductus deferens is a thick-walled tube. Its wall is made of smooth muscle. In this spermatic cord, we've divided the ductus deferens. The lumen is quite small. Passing upwards in the spermatic cord, the ductus deferens reaches the inguinal canal, which is shown in tape 3 of this atlas. Here, we're at the external inguinal ring. We'll divide these external oblique fibers to get to the region of the internal inguinal ring, which is here. As it passes through the internal ring, the ductus deferens passes backwards. To follow the ductus deferens, we'll divide the abdominal wall and go round to the inside. The abdominal viscera 
have been removed. The internal inguinal ring is down here. To see it better, we'll remove the peritoneum. And we'll also remove some of the underlying fat. Here are the testicular vessels passing downwards and forwards towards the internal inguinal ring. Here's the ductus deferens. It runs backwards alongside the dome of the bladder, which is here, then crosses the ureter, which is lateral to it, and passes down behind the base of the bladder. Here, we're looking from behind at the base of the bladder and the prostate. Part of the prostate has been removed here. On each side, the ductus deferens widens out to form the ampulla, where spermatozoa are stored. Lateral to the ampulla on each side is the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicles produce a nutrient liquid that forms much of the total volume of the seminal fluid. The walls of the ampulla and of the seminal vesicle are formed largely of smooth muscle. When this contracts, the contents of both chambers pass together into the ejaculatory duct.